Glory. Praise God. I think that you're acting like you've come to worship. <laughs> I know that I always come to worship the Lord. <laughs> Amen. I often wonder when I first became a believer, when I first got saved, I wonder, I, I, I thought, I wonder what it would be like to kind of go to church like every day, you know, every day of the week. Well, the Lord called me into the ministry and I found out just, just about how it would be, you know. Uh huh. And I'm not saying that I never get tired. Uh, um, I never get tired, but I never get tired of going to the house of God. Amen. Sometimes I come in off the road, I feel like I can't get one foot in front of the other. But you know what? I'm going to get myself up and go to the house of God. Amen. It is important to be in the house of the Lord and to be with believers. Amen. Amen. And to assemble ourselves together as the word of God commands us to do. It is not optional, you know. We are commanded to assemble ourselves together. I'm going to ask you for a little more help on the microphone. Uh, you know, because I'm, a, I'm one of those wild Pentecostal preachers. And I'm not going to change for anybody. So I'm just going to go. I've been preaching for 40 years. And I've got 40 more years to preach yet. So I'm, that's why I need to have the sound just like I need for it to be. You know, so I can keep my voice. And I'm just thanking the Lord for being in Carolina. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I come to you from New Jersey by way of Tennessee. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey, just to give you that little background. I am from New Jersey, and, uh, and uh, in 07, I moved to Tennessee, and so I still call New Jersey up home, and now Tennessee is down home, and, and now I'm down here <laughs> in Carolina, and I thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity that he's given me, and uh, he's given me the privilege and the honor to serve him and to serve his people. Amen. And so I am here tonight to serve your spiritual plates. Amen. How is that? Is that okay? Yes. That I've come to serve what? Your spiritual plates. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm your waitress. <laughs> uh-huh. And I just want to tell you that I've uh, I've got some things to put on your spiritual plates that you're going to like. You'll you'll like it. You you really will. And you'll probably say amen and praise the Lord and even raise your hand, but some of the you, some of the things I'll put on your spiritual plates, you'll go, "Oh, wow. Well, mm, oh me. I know this woman didn't come down here all the way from New Jersey by way of Tennessee and jack us up like that, you know." But uh, uh, <laughs> but I'm just wanting the Holy Spirit because he serves the meal. Isn't that interesting how, you know, he chooses and selects the meal, you know, for, for the dinner that we're going to receive. Because what I've also come to do by the power of the Holy Ghost is to nourish your souls. To nourish your souls and to nourish your hearts and your minds and your total being. That's what the word of God does. It nourishes us. Isn't that right? There is nourishment. You know, I had my physical food because I have to have the strength, you know, to do the Lord's work. But the, the, the spiritual food is the most important of all. Amen. And so I'm really, I'm going to say it. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> That's ministry to the military. I learned that. <laughs> I learned that about 30 years ago, some 30 some years ago. I've learned that, that if I say I'm excited. I'm excited. Amen. Well, I am excited. I'm excited in the Lord. I'm excited for my children over here that I've adopted, Pastor <laughs> and First Lady, uh -huh. L Lady Miller. That's what we say in our culture. You know, we call her Lady Miller. Is that okay? And I'm really excited about them inviting me to come and, and minister. And we've, we've been together in worship. We've been together in ministry, you know, over the years. And God has blessed us together. And we've been able to be in Germany all in the same year. All within the same year, we were in Germany together. We were in El Paso. And we were in Louisville, Kentucky together recently. And, and here now we're here. But let me tell you another reason why I'm very excited. My children are here. <laughs> my babies <laughs> you know and I'll, I'll talk about it a little more because I want to tie it in I always do everywhere I go I tie it in but I but I, you know their their grandma has a better tan than they do but uh, but these are my grandchildren and when I say you got to understand this is real 
Right. Th this is real. This is a God thing that is real. It's genuine. It's authentic. There's nothing false or phony about me saying this or nothing uh, joking about me saying this because God has kept his promise and I will deal with it more in the message. But this is my grandson, Pastor Tommy Hart. <laughs> uh huh. My granddaughter, Melody Hart, First Lady Melody Hart. Amen. And uh, my great granddaughter, Mallory. <laughs> yes. And she calls me Great Graham, and I melt. <laughs> And I just love it. And, and I hadn't seen her for a while. She walked over to me and I didn't even recognize her because she's grown up so much and she's getting to be quite a little lady. Isn't she pretty? Isn't she beautiful? So I'll share a little more because I'm going to be able to tie it in. See, I, you know, I have more confirmation for the message. But tonight I'm going to preach from Psalm 42. I think that uh, most of you would be uh, familiar with Psalm 42, and if you're not, let us help you to become familiar with Psalm 42. I want to thank you all for being here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank you for worshiping in the way that you have. And I believe that there's been prayer in this place. I believe somebody's been praying because I have felt it, and I have felt it today all day long. I have felt the prayers of the saints, and there's nothing like the prayers of the saints. And I just believe that God wants to do some wonderful, wonderful things in this revival. And we're not going to wait until tomorrow night for him to do it. I, I want God to do it tonight. Amen. I want it to happen tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's a right now God. Isn't that right? And so I want the Lord to just do exactly what he wants to do. We're going to let him do just what he wants to do. I'm going to say what he wants me to say. If he doesn't want me to say it, I don't want to say it. You know, if he doesn't want me to do it, I don't want to do it. But if he wants me to, I will do it. Is that right? I believe in obedience, as Pastor said. And so I just want him to just revive us and renew us and restore us and reanimate us and rejuvenate us in the spirit. Because that's what revival is all about. Like our brother said, he gave a wonderful uh, devotion on that. And I'm uh, thankful for that. But what does it say in Psalm 42? It says, as the deer, and, and you can go ahead and stand, because I believe that we do need to honor the word of God, even though I'm not going to read a lot of scripture. I'm just going to read verse 1 and 2. It says in Psalm 42, how many of you know this is the inerrant word of God? Yes. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that this is the infallible word of God? Amen. 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 The Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. For the word of God is forever settled in heaven. I also believe that the word of God is alive because the Bible says that the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten son of the father full of grace and truth. Amen. So I believe that the word of God is alive tonight. And so I'm going to preach, and, we, and our theme, really, I think we do have somewhat of a theme, and that theme would be a thirsting for God, Amen. thirsting for God. And I think that this is an appropriate passage for thirsting for God. How many of you know that we, and I'm not saying you, I include myself, that we need to thirst for God even more than we ever have in the, in the hour that we're living in? Yes. In this day and hour that we are living in, we as a people of God need to have a, a, a greater thirst for God so that we can draw others to him. Isn't that right? It's just not all about us. It's all about what we do to bring others to him. But we'll never be able to persuade someone else if we are not fully persuaded in him ourselves. How many of you believe that right now? And so it says here, as the deer, and I love the way God uses animals. He will do that, you know. He will just use animals to get his point across, you know. And he says, as the deer does what? As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants what? My soul for you, O oh God. My soul, soul is very important. My soul thirsts for you, God, the living God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I, I just think that we need to just, just think about that just for a second. My soul, the, uh, your soul personally, say my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul thirsts for you, oh God. I thirst for you, oh God, you, because you are the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. God, I am thanking you once again for the opportunity, as I've already said, to serve you. And I'm here to serve you, God. And then you have allowed me to serve your people. And I don't take that lightly. Lord, these are, uh, Jesus, these are people that you died for. You died for them. You gave your life for them. And I can't stand before them and just say and do anything, God, that I would want. But Lord, it's all about what you want for them and how you want to move move in their lives and bring change and transformation in all of our lives in this meeting and in this service tonight. I'm praying that you will have your way and that your perfect will will be done in each one of our lives, that we will not leave here the same. We, we cannot leave the same if we receive your word and apply your word. Lord, Holy Ghost, I need for you to anoint me. <laughs> I have already asked you, my intercessors I know are asking you to do that. I need your anointing. I need your power. I need clarity of mind. Hallelujah. And I want to preach your word with clarity and fearlessly as I should. In no other name, but in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. amen. And God bless you and thank you so much. You, now you may be seated and guess who's going to do the standing? <laughs> A lot of times I will sit down during praise and worship. It all depends. It's hard for me to do that, though, because uh, before I started preaching, I was praise and worship leader, actually a, a minister of music and, and worship pastor in my church in New Jersey. And so, and I love to worship, and, and I know that I'm going to be standing for a while, so sometimes I'll sit down. But you know what? I, I, tonight I couldn't even sit down. I was, I was just, I was just in, into the worship. But when it talks about tonight, when it talks about thirsting for God... I think that most of us know what thirst means, you know, what having a thirst means. It means to desire. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, having a thirst means a cr to crave. Right. It means to uh, pant. Right. Uh -huh. It means to long. I'm going to go over on this side. It means to long. It means to have a hunger for something. Right. Uh, it means to uh, acknowledge that you have a need for something or, or that you really want something so desperately that you really want something. So I just believe that the people of God tonight, we need to put ourselves in the place where we say, God, I desire you more than I ever have. And I'm craving for your touch and blessing in my life and, yes. and change in my life. And I'm panting after you and, and I long for you. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of an intimate term, isn't that right? It's a loving term that we say that I'm 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 panting, I'm longing for you. Uh, I have a hunger for you. I need you, oh God, and I want you more than anything else. I just wish that the believers would get back to that place where we want God. And want a relationship with God more than anything else. But, you know, I loved also what it says in Psalm 63. It's one of my very favorite Psalms. In Psalm 63, verse 1 to 5, it says, God, you are my God. <laughs> now, I just want to tell you something that humbles me. Does that humble you tonight? That we can even call him God, that even say you are my God. It takes me to Song of Solomon in chapter 6 of Song of Solomon. I think it's verse 3 where it says, I am my lovers. If That becomes a very intimate uh, term as well. But spiritually, it's saying I am my lovers and my lover is mine. So you see, uh, he is my God and I am his. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we have that kind of a, we have that kind of a relationship with the Lord. And I like the way the psalmist said it. He just came right out with it. He said, you are my God. And because you are my God, early will I, here comes one of those words for thirst, early will I what? Seek you. Yes. Yeah. He says, I'm not going to wait until everything else, I do everything else and, and, and uh, you know, plan everything else. He says, but you know, early, because you are my God, early am I going to seek you and uh, get everything else out of uh, you know, everything else out of the way, and then I'm going to seek you. And he goes on to say, and my soul thirsts for you. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And he says, even my flesh longs for you, uh, for, for you in a dry and thirsty land, in a dry place where there is no water. And, and I like the way he goes on with this first lady, Tammy. I really love the way he, he, he says it in this way. He says, so, so, I like that. 
So I have looked for you in the sanctuary. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I hope that when you come to church, I really do. You know, I'm reading scripture when I'm already preaching too. I'm just really hoping that when you come to church, that you haven't come to church to look for this and look for that. You know, and I know that sometimes people get really sidetracked and they become very distracted because they say, you know, if, it's, if, the, if the temperature's not right, you know, if the music is not right and if the people are too loud... And if the pastor doesn't preach what I want, and if there's, you know, I want to know what, I really want to know what you've come in the sanctuary for. I really do. I really want to know that what you've come into the sanctuary for, because the psalmist says, because I have come into the sanctuary, I've looked for you in the sanctuary. Why? Because I want to see your power and I want to see your glory. Why? Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you I will lift up my hands in your name and then he goes on to say and my soul now I told you I'm going to deal with soul right here your soul deals with your will what you want your emotions what you feel and your intellect what you know did everybody hear what I just said I said, your soul deals with your will. That's what you want. Isn't that right? Uh huh. It deals with your emotions, and that's what you feel, and your intellect, what you know. And so that's, that's why he says, I will, I, I will, uh, my lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name, and my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Praise God. How many of you know that there is no satisfaction outside of God? There is no contentment outside of God. There is no completeness outside of God. There is no fulfillment outside of God. Does anybody know that and believe that? We will look for satisfaction, fulfillment, contentment in every person, in every way, and in everything. But there is no satisfaction other than having a relationship with God and thirsting for God and going after God. And as with Meryl and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Hallelujah. So I really like these five verses because, again, the key words are like, I've looked for you, I've searched for you, I thirst for you, I've longed for you, and then I know I am satisfied. I will be satisfied. Praise the Lord. You see, we see David thirsting for God like a deer, you know, just like a deer. You know, again, God uses a, you know, a, a, the deer running or even fleeing from his hunter or as, or as a deer panting after a drink of water, for he knows if he can get to the water, he will be refreshed. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you know that we'll, we're refreshed when we get into that living water, the, the living water? And, we escape, and he knows that he can escape for his life. But if he doesn't, he knows he's going to die. And I'm just saying to the people of God, we need to thirst for God and go after him. Just like David did. And, and, and David thirsted for God like a man in a desert, in a dry place for water. And since water is symbolic of the Holy Spirit tonight, I want us to go after God in and through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is how we go after God. Isn't that right? It is the Spirit of God that leads us to a closer walk. It is the Spirit of God that tells you you need to commune with God. It is the Spirit of God that says you need to get into the Word and listen to what God has to say to you. You see, so we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody just raise your hand and say, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to go after God. And that's really what I'm preaching about tonight. I want us to thirst after God. I want us to chase after God. I want us to go after God. I want us to pan after God tonight in this revival. I know I want to do that more than anything in my life. Even at this point in my life, I want to thirst after God, run after him, chase it. Come on. I want the whole church to say, I want to be a God chaser. I am going to be a God chaser. Come on. Come on. Uh huh. <laughs> Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody say, what are you doing? I said, I'm going after God. I'm just, go I'm just going after God. I'm just going after uh-huh. You can't hinder me because I'm going after God. Ooh, hallelujah. You know, I don't want to get stirred up already, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
I'm really trying to lay the foundation, but you know, I get excited. I get excited when I talk about going after my God. Come on, did you say he's my God? Oh, oh, oh. I'm going after my God and your God. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus even said that. He says, and I'm going, I'm leaving you. I'm going to your God and I'm going to my God. I, 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 all right. I almost started kicking right there. Oh my. Somebody praise the Lord. <laughs> Pastor said, go ahead and kick Mama J. <laughs> you know, I once read a story about a young man who went to the pastor to search for God. And the man of God spent many hours, you know, trying to uh, discussing the subject with the young man. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere. And so he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take him down to the river. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and take him down to the river. And when he did, he pushed his head under the water. And as the young man began fighting to get his head above water, the pastor said, I'm going, don't you one more time. He just put his head down under the water one more time. And this time when he got up, you know, fighting, you know, fighting to get his head above water, the pastor said, I have a pointed question for you. I want to know what was it that you wanted more than anything? and he said air uh -huh. <laughs> come on can I help anybody tonight I just think that if we need to get that desperate I just think we need to get that desperate I think we need to get that desperate and say God just like I want air when I feel like I can't breathe I feel like I can't make it come on I want you I want you Lord just like I would want, I would want that air, and, uh, and and I want God that much. I want Him. I want to search for God that much. Search after Him like a drowning man needing air. And and Lord, You are the air we breathe anyway. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm going to move on from there and tell you that Jesus said it like this. He says, blessed are they that do hunger. Yeah, I like the word do there. Sometimes we leave out those little words that have such meaning to the passage. He says, I, I, he says blessed are those or happy are those who do hunger and what? thirst there's that word after what righteousness that's who God is he's righteousness he says for they shall be there's a there's a promise there if you do hunger if you do hunger nothing well I might hunger I may maybe a hunger but if you do hunger after him if you hunger after him and his righteousness if you go after him and his righteousness the Bible says you shall be what You'll be filled. There's that word again. You will be satisfied. You will be complete. You will be fulfilled. As a matter of fact, I'm going to just kind of really mess with your theology right here. I want every one of us before we leave from here to have the testimony that we are all addicted. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I like that word. I like that word when it's used in the word in the right context. I'll tell you, and let me tell you the right context for it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 15, it says, They have addicted themselves to Jesus. Hallelujah. See, some of you were giving me that look, but I'm not intimidated. Uh -huh, when I said about you leaving here addicted, you were once addicted, you know, so let's go ahead and get addicted here. Come on, let's get addicted to the real thing. <laughs> Come on, let's get addicted to the real thing. And I like that scripture where it says, and they have addicted themselves to Jesus. And we need to be able to stand and say, I am addicted. <laughs> Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I am. I am. And I want to be more addicted to Jesus. Somebody say, I really, I, th really, this is my desire is that I become even more addicted to him. In other words, I can't do without him. I cannot do without the Lord. I cannot do, I cannot make it without the Lord. I cannot survive without him. And so that's why I want to become addicted to him. I don't want to be loose from him. Not at all. That's one way I don't need deliverance. Come on. I, I, I just need to get closer and and closer to him because I think that you know and understand exactly what happens because maybe you experienced this in your former life when you were addicted to drugs come on when you were addicted to a lot of other things you know what an addict does they will do everything they can to get that hit and get that high that next come on you know that 
you know, you know exactly what it is. You know, you can't do without it. And the one thing that they'll do anything, they'll do anything. They'll stay up all night and run the streets all night long. Come on, to be able to find it wherever it is. Is that right? See, how we become addicted to the Lord is we, we need to be willing to stay up all night long. Come on and just say, Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Come on. Until you touch my life, until you change me. You see, that's what the addict, they become so desperate. I have to have this. I've got to have it wherever I have to go. Another thing that an addict does is they hang around with the people that can take them where and they can find it. Is anybody going to help me with that one? I said, is anybody going to help me with that one? I said that addicts hang around with other addicts that's going to tell you where can we get it from. Is that right? Well, I want to hang around with you if you're addicted to Jesus because I want you to be able to tell me where I can find him and help my God. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. If you're addicted to Jesus, I'll hang with you. Come on. Hallelujah. I'll spend time with you. I'm not going to spend time with people that are not addicted to him. I want you to help me to get closer to him and get more of him in my life. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Some of you are still addicted to Facebook. What can I tell you? Uh -huh. If you would spend as much time with God as you do and the Lord as you do on Facebook, you, oh, you would be more satisfied. You would be a lot more content in your life. Hallelujah. And we need to be desperate. We need to be so desperate. You know, there's a young man that, and right now he is going through, you know, um, rehabilitation and doing quite well. And I thank God for it. But, you know, his son came to see him uh, recently. His son came to see him and he was so addicted. His son lives uh, in another country, you know. And, and when his son came to visit with him and was supposed to spend a month with him, he was so strung out on drugs he wasn't even there to welcome his own son you see that's how addicted how how addicted people are nothing else is important to them come on uh-huh nothing else at all is important to them even his son that, that, that his 10 year old son that was coming to spend a month with him they couldn't even find him when the child arrived are you hearing me they couldn't even find him when the child uh, went home a month later why because the most important thing to him was to get another one of those hits that he thought come on is that right well, let me just tell you something. When we are addicted to the Lord, nothing else should be more important to us. When we are going after God and we are thirsting after God. I want us to go into scripture here in Genesis chapter 5. And, and I'm going to just talk about individuals that just went after more of God. And you did sing the right song tonight. You started out. I want more of you, God. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Set that fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I have to have more of you, God, because that is really the only place to be. Is in the divine presence of God. Is that right? In a relationship with Him. And I will talk about that later because I don't want to get ahead of myself talking about the relationship of it. But I just want to show you how individuals in Scripture went after God. In Genesis chapter 5, here's what it says about a man by the name of Enoch. In chapter 5 and verse 24, the word tells us that Enoch walked with God. Right? That's right. Come on. Uh -huh. He did what? He walked with God. Yes, yes. Wouldn't that be wonderful if somebody would say, do you know her? Uh -huh. do, you, do you know her? She walks with God. You know, isn't that wonderful? Do you know him? Oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. Do you know that Wade yes. Miller? He's kind of crazy, isn't he, for God? He's really crazy for God. He just walks with God. He's a crazy man after God. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to have that reputation that when somebody mentioned your name, they say, oh, yeah, you know, so-and-so. Oh, yeah, that. He walks with God. Oh, yeah. He, she walks with God. You see, we want to be known for this and known for that. But I tell you, what we really need to be known for is that we are walking with God. And you know what it says about Enoch? He walked with God. In other words, he went after God in such a way. He was, he was with God in such a way that when it came time, God just, he, the Bible says he was not. God just took him. Yeah. Isn't that right? You see, walking is a forward 
uh, uh, motion. Uh, come on. Uh, uh, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Walking is a continued forward movement. Uh, and, and when we walk with the Lord, we need to keep our eyes, keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. No matter what's happening around us, we need to walk with God. You see, when we look at the news tonight, we look at CNN or Fox News, whatever, whichever one you watch, and it all gets on my last nerve. But anyway, I... I will watch it for a little bit. I need to know what's going on. I need to know some of the current events and things that are going on, but all of it just about gets on my last nerve and I'll turn the mess off, you know, and I said, I'm about sick of this now. It's a, lot, a bunch of craziness, but we really shouldn't be surprised about it. And let me just tell you something. I'm not worried about it. That's right. Let me just tell you something. I am not worried about what the president does. I'm not worried about his cabinet. I'm not worried about any of that. You want to know all, all I need to do is go after God. That's the answer. I just need, come on. I'm not worried about what's going to happen with the economy. I'm not, wor I'm not. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not going to fear it because I have the solution to that. I have the answer to that. As long as I go after God, I have a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Come on, does anybody believe that right now? As a matter of fact, I just believe that those who go after God will always have a Goshen. Did anybody hear me? I said that when all the mess was going on in Egypt, God's people had Goshen. Uh-huh, the lights were always on. Come on, the death angel didn't come by. Ah. Come on, raise your hands and say, yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. I said, those that go after God, we're always going to be, uh, we're always going to be protected. We're always going to be kept. God is never going to leave or forsake us. And so I'm not worried about any decisions that they make politically. I'm more concerned about what I'm doing spiritually. And God is going to take care of the rest of it. Hallelujah. For if I seek first the kingdom of God and I, I seek his righteousness, everything else is going to be added. Does anybody, hallelujah, does anybody believe that right now? Say amen. So Enoch, you just went ahead and you just walked with God. I'm not going to take my eyes off you, Lord. And I'm going to keep walking and toward him. I'm going to keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And one day we will see him face to face. Does anybody believe that? Say amen. Uh -huh. I want to tell you that uh, Moses had a great thirst for God. Yes, Do you know that he did? Yes, he did. Uh, oh, you know what? I like Moses. I've been reading about it because I'm reading through the Bible this year. I'm, I'm doing it that way this year. So I just finished, you know, I'm, I'm going through a lot of the things about Moses and seeing him even in a new light. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was a man that uh, he was a man that the Lord even said to his siblings. Yes. You know, the Lord said to his siblings, Aaron and Miriam, when they, oh, oh yeah, when, when, they, when they wanted to talk about him, they wanted to put him down and said, does God not listen to anybody else but Moses, you know? God came to them and he said, let me ask you a question. Weren't you afraid? Come on, come on. He, oh, uh, I'm going to talk about this man that truly went after God. For God to say this about him, I want to tell you, grandson, he was one who went after God. Because let me just tell you what he said to Miriam and Aaron, his sister and brother. Weren't you afraid to speak against your brother? He said, see, when I speak to other prophets, he said, I speak to them through dreams and visions. He said, but I speak to him face to my, oh God. I'm ready to kick now. Oh, yeah, I'm ready to kick now, honey. He said, let me just, oh, yeah, let me tell you something. I, I speak to them through dreams and visions, but I want to tell your brother, I speak to him face to face because he's come after me with everything in him. Oh, hallelujah. And you know what? One day God even came to Moses and here's what he said to him. I'm sick and tired of that rebellious co uh, congregation that you are pastoring. Uh -huh. I've had it with them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to jack them all up and start over again. Is that right? Oh, yeah, God has the right to do that, too. Uh -huh. now, we better be glad for Jesus. I would, I would say, somebody needs to say, thank God for Jesus. Because he's definitely the buffer. He's, uh oh, because when God got sick and tired, he just wiped you out of here. I'll tell you that right now. 
Uh, he said, just kill them all, every one of them. God, don't leave one of them. Come on, are you hearing me? And he told, he told Moses too. He says, and, and I just want to tell you, my presence is not even going to go with you. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll send an angel, but I'm not going with you. Right. Uh huh. And we know Moses, who walked with God, who who constantly went after God, and his heart was his heart was pure before God. He said, "God, no, I know the angels are fine. The angels are good, but if your presence doesn't go, if you don't go with us, please don't take us up from here." And God says, "Okay, okay, Moses. Uh huh. Okay, okay. My presence will go with you." And you would have thought that Moses would have done a dance right there, you know. Woo. Uh-huh. Yeah, you would have thought that he would have danced down right there. Come on. But you know what? He was, he, he was glad for what God said. He says, you're going to go with us? Great. Now, show us your glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh-huh. You see, he wanted more. Oh, yeah, your presence. Oh, thank you, God. But now I'm just going to ask you for some more. I'm going to ask you, show us your glory. Praise the Lord. And the Lord showed me something just recently about that. He said, Jackie, the anointing is not for you. The anointing is for my people because I anoint you so that I I can use you to bring my people into my presence. And then I will show them my glory. And there it is right there. There it is right there. Your presence, your glory. Come on. And, and, Mo, and Moses went after that. He, he said, that's what, I'm, I, that's what we need. That's what I want. That's what we need. Your presence and your glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, I like the way he did that. And you see, he just, he said, I want more. We just have to have more. And you even sang it tonight, show it the song that has show us your glory in it. You see, what I find, and, and I've now been preaching for 40 years in April. It, I'm, I'm going to celebrate my 40 years of preaching, having credentials in the church of God. And I've been in 38 countries and 48 of the states. I see different faces, different, different cultures and different languages and everything else. But what I do see in many of our churches that some people just have enough of God to make them good and miserable. <laughs> that was the broccoli that you don't like. <laughs> uh-huh, that, those were the peas and the spinach that you don't like. Come on. Is anybody going to hear what I said? And you know that's the truth. A lot of people, they just have enough of God. Isn't that right? To make them good and miserable. We don't need ankle deep experience with God. We don't have a relationship with God. We don't need knee deep. We we don't need waist deep. We we have to get in over our heads with God. Isn't that right? Does anybody believe that? And we do see people, they don't really care about his presence. They don't really care about his glory. You know, they just want to do the religious thing. Is anybody hearing me now? Yeah, they just go after the religion, you know, the religious thing, you know, just enough to just kind of calm their, you know, their conscience down for a hot New York minute. Is that Is that right? Yeah. But I like Elijah too. And you know, Elijah just went ahead and just did what God wanted him to do. You know, he was just a servant that whatever God told him to do, he would do it. Isn't that right? He just went after God in obedience. And there's nothing better than that. This prophet just went after God. Whatever God told him to do, he just went ahead and did it. Isn't that right? And when God got finished with him doing that in 2 Kings chapter 2, he just sent a chariot down and, and, and come on. He just sent a chariot after him and took him away. Oh my. So you have to be close to God to have experiences like that. You know, to have Enoch's experience, to have Elijah's experience. You have to be close to God for that to happen. And wouldn't that be wonderful if the Lord just came down there and just took us like that? That's what he wants to do. That's how he wants to do that. Does anybody believe that right now? Just shout amen. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Say, I want to go, but not now. <laughs> 
oh yeah, I want to go, but not now. <laughs> uh, isn't that something? But 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 I like how I like how Elijah just you know he just did his work, just did the ministry that God called him to, and and then God just came down and just took him in, just took him in a chariot, you know, took him to glory. And when he went, oh my, his little guy, his little guy, the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. Come on, the next generation. You see, Elijah had shown him how to serve God and be what God wanted him to be. Is that right? And that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I, I have that heart and I have that burden right now for the next generation. And you hear me talk about it uh, all the time for the next generation. That's why I'm so proud of my grandsons because they're coming behind grandma. Are you hearing me? And they're doing the work of the Lord. Them and their little sweet wives. Uh, and Teddy is out in California and Crystal, the other grandson and their boys. And then Tommy and Melody and their girls are here. Come on. Are you hearing me? And see, I'm proud of this next generation that is, they, they started out early on here. Isn't that right? And what I'm, what I'm expecting out of them, I'm expecting them to do greater things. And that's in the positive way. I'm expecting you to do greater things than I've ever done for God. Isn't that what Jesus told his disciples? He says, I'm going, come on. But I'm expecting you to do greater things. And when grandma is gone, oh, come on. I'm expecting you and, uh, to keep right on going. Just keep right on taking this work on. And keep on taking this ministry on. Does anybody believe what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. And that's why, see, Elisha saw the real. He saw Elijah go after God. And he says, and you know what I want? I want a double portion of that. Uh-huh. He says, yeah, I, I, want a, I, want, I want double of that. Come on. He said, I'm not going to be satisfied with just having what? I want now a double portion of, oh, hallelujah. I want some more of that. Amen. Some more of what he is and what he's doing for God. Is that right? Even when they would come to him and, you know, they would try to dissuade him. They said, you know, you know, your master, you know, he's going to do this. He's got, you know, the prophets, you know, the school of prophets, you know. Uh -huh. and, and, and even Elijah himself would turn to Elisha and say, you know, you can stay here. Jericho if you want to and he was like uh -uh, I'm coming with you no I'm going with you uh huh. come on uh -huh. all the places that Elijah went, went, went to Elisha was right behind him isn't that right he was right behind him he said oh no I'm going with you I'm not staying here now, do you know that your master no be quiet be quiet because I'm going with him why because he's going after God I'm going to go after the one who's going after God come on I wish somebody would just praise the Lord how many, how many of you know that? How many of you know that gener that next generation got? How many of you know that next generation got what he wanted? Uh -huh. I said, how many of you know when that next generation had an example in, in Elijah, he got what he wanted. Elijah was known for seven main miracles, but Elijah got his 14 that he asked for. Is that right? He, he, he only got 13 and somebody would have thought, you know, in his life, he, he only got 13 and somebody would have thought that God couldn't count. How many of you know that God is the master mathematician? How many of you believe that right now? I said, how many of you know he wasn't going to cut him short? <laughs> he said, I want more. I want more than he had. I want to do more than he had. I want to be more than he was. And you know what? God allowed it because when Elisha died, they threw a dead body uh, uh, in his great mind. Come on. They threw that dead body. Uh, uh, does anybody understand what I just said? I say they threw a dead body in his grave and that body came back to life. Uh, oh, he got his 14 miracles. He got his 14 blessing. Would somebody just raise your hand and praise God and say, I believe that tonight. Say amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when we thirst for God, it's going to bring power in our lives. Come on. Uh -huh. See, people want the power, but, but they don't want the giver of the power. Is that right? Uh -huh. they, don't, they want the anointing, but they don't want the anointer. 
uh, they don't they want the gift but they don't want the giver of the gifts uh, are you hearing what i'm saying they want to bypass that they want to bypass that part of it and they want to have the they want to have the blessing but they don't want the blesser you see there's a difference between power and strength goliath had strength but david had power he said oh. Uh -huh. He said, oh, yeah, you come with all your stuff on. Oh, come on. But I come to you. Uh, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Because David, even, even though he made his mistakes, God still said that he still said. Come on. What did he say? What did he say about him? That he was a man after his own heart. Come on, even though we can, even though we make mistakes, sometimes we mess up along the way, but we can still maintain the testimony that we are women and men after God's own heart. Come on, you've messed up, I've messed up. I've fallen flat on my face, you have. I've failed God, you have. We get up, we ask him to forgive us, and we keep on going and, be, and being the man and woman after his own heart. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody pray. My God. I, ah, hey, I feel the presence of the Lord now. I feel, I feel my helper right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, I'm still a woman after his own heart. You're still a man after his own heart. Hallelujah. After him, after him, David still went after God, even, even in his sin and his wrong. What did he do? He got up from there and continued to go after God. And God continued to bless. Hallelujah. And use his life. Isn't that wonderful? We can still go after God. Hallelujah. I want us to look at Jacob for a moment. I'm really up in the Old Testament quite a bit here, right. uh, but I just, yeah, because that's where God wants us to be right now. And, and I want you to look at Jacob because we see him, you know, Jacob wanted God, but he wanted God on his terms. Right. Is that right? I'm very dramatic and I'm not going to change, okay? You know, <laughs> you know now that I'm 74 years old, there, there's no telling what I might do. <laughs> I can get away with it. They'll just say, well, she's a senior. She can get away with it. She's old. She can get away with it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jacob. Oh, he did. He, oh, he wanted God. He wanted, he wanted, he wanted God's blessing. He, he wanted the blessing. Let me just put it that way. He wanted the blessing, but he wanted it on his terms. He wanted, he wanted it his way. Uh-huh. Uh and so we know all about him with his deception, right. with his lies, you know, and, and, and uh, with his brother, you know, Esau and, you know, selling his birthright and deceiving. And of course, he got deceived a few times, too. What goes around comes around, Jacob, you know. Oh, oh yeah. And had the nerve to be fussing about Laban, you know, uh, deceiving him. But we know this about Jacob. He finally started to come to his senses and, and he finally said, you know, I really do want God. I really do. You know, I've kind of uh, tried to come up another way. I've tried to get God's blessing and, and come to God another way, my own way. But see, he started to realize that he needed to go the right way that God wanted to go after him to go after him. And so we see him as the scripture says wrestling with God or wrestling with the angel of the Lord all night long and wrestling with him until daybreak yes. Yes, you see I see him stopping finally stopping fighting against the will of God and and going his own way and doing his own thing and now he's clinging to God he's right. he begins to hold on to God now right. Uh -huh. he, he, he begins to take hold of God. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Because the Bible says that he, he takes hold of God and he says, I, I, I need you to bless me. He starts wrestling with God. He says, I need, you to, I need you to bless me. I want your blessing. I want your blessing. I'm not going to let you go. I'm, this time, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Well, there's something interesting that happened and I don't want you to miss this. Because while he was wrestling... The Lord asked him a question. He asked him a very pointed question. He asked him, what is your name? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I want you to really get this. Don't miss this. He said, what is your name? 
Because you see, what the Lord knew was that there was another time that Jacob stood at the bedside of his elderly father, Isaac. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Is that right? What did Isaac say, my grandson, Pastor Tommy? Isaac said, my eyes are dim. I can't really see very well. Who are you? In other words, what is your name? Are you following me? Uh huh. And you see, we know how Rebecca got all up into God's business. Isn't that right? And saw, you know, saw that, you know, that Isaac more favored Esau because he was a man of the field and you know, that kind of thing. Rebecca was going to, you know, she was going to help out, help Jacob. God had already said, God had already given the word that the older would serve that. Come on. Uh -huh, but we're going to get into it. See, because we think that God needs help. I wish somebody would help me preach right there. We always think that God needs help. And let me tell you, as long as we're trying to help God, we're not going after God. Come on. Uh -huh. Did anybody hear what I just said? If we're going to try to do it our way, we're going to try to help God tell him what to do. We think he only knows what we tell him a lot of times. Come on. Isn't that right? And so as long as we're trying to help God out and, and want it, everything to happen on our terms, then we're not going after God. Isn't that right? Isn't that true? And so that's exactly what was going on here. And so, you know, he, uh, you know, Jacob, uh, Rebecca has him to, you know, uh, take the food to his dad, you know, the whole bit. Now here comes Esau in from the field to fix the food. It had already been given. The blessing had been given. I mean, you know the whole story. I don't want to preach that whole thing. But the point that I really want to make here is that when the Lord asked him who he was or what was his name, he wanted to see if he was going to say Esau. Saw this time. Right. That's right. Ooh. That's good. Is that, uh huh? Because that's what he said when his natural father asked him his name. Is that right? He said he was Esau. Isn't that right? We will never get the blessing. We will never, ever get the blessing if we're going to be deceptive and, and come on and try to get the blessing on our terms and get close. You can't get close to God that way. Let me tell you something. God is not going to bless you and me past our last act of disobedience. So we need to come clean and get it right. Come on. And then go on after him. Come on. And go after him and work on that. And that's what was happening with Jacob. He was trying to get Jacob to come clean right there. That's why he asked them, what is your name? He wanted to know if he was going to say Esau this time. But Jacob came clean and said, Jacob. And God said, not anymore. <laughs> I'm going to have to change your name, boy. I'm going to have to change your name because you see, every time somebody calls your name, they're going to say, you mean the liar? You mean the deceiver? You mean the supplanter? You mean, he says, I'm going to change your name and give you a new reputation and one who goes after me. Come on. He stopped fighting against God. Come on. Started clinging to God and holding on to God now. How many of you know that God blessed him? I said, how many of you know that God blessed him? Somebody praise the Lord. He became the prince uh, and he had power with God and he had power with men. And we see him thirsting after God now. Hallelujah. And that's what we, you and I are going to have to do. We're going to have to go thirsting after God, not fighting against God, not wanting our will, not being stubborn with God, but going after the will of God and seeking a relationship with God and, and go after, uh, seek, seek the face. That's, a, that's my point I'm trying to make. We need to seek the face of God and not the hand of God. Is anybody hearing me now? Uh huh. You see, we, when we seek the face of God, see, that's where Jacob got to. He got to the point where he started seeking the face of God. Yeah. Is that right? right? And when we seek the face of God, we are seeking his character. We're, we're seeking his nature. We're seeking his holiness. Come on. We're seeking who he is, not what he can do for us. You're seeking the face of God is seeking to get into a relationship with God, not another experience with God. Because experiences do not last. That's right. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And experiences, you know, they move, you move from one experience to another. And you know what? It doesn't last very long. You enjoy that experience for a while, but you move, you have to move on to something else because it doesn't satisfy. Are you hearing me? That's right. That's 
When people can stay together in a marriage. Now, I've never been married. I am 74. I've never been married. And I've never had any biological children. But, you know, I'm around married people quite a bit, <laughs> you know. And, and, you know, and how long have you been married now? Yeah, 37 years, you know, I, 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 I kind of have a feeling that this was not an arrangement. I have a feeling that this is not an experience. Right. Uh -huh. Has it all been good? No. No. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you want to know why? Because you're not perfect. <laughs> That's the reason why. None of us are perfect up in here. <laughs> Did you hear me? I said, none of us are perfect up in here, but I believe that you're still together. And many of you, I would, I'm, I would say about you that you're still together because it's a relationship. Yes. Come on. You see, she doesn't look like, he doesn't look like he looked when you first met him and fell in love with him and thought he was drop dead gorgeous. Uh, she said he still is. Uh, uh, she, uh, uh, right. But he doesn't, he doesn't look like he looked when you first met him. She doesn't look like, yeah, come on, when you first met them, you know, you, you, you know your uh, things change. <laughs> uh -huh, come on, uh -huh, uh -huh, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, uh -huh, things change. Is anybody going to help me preach that? Come on, you say, no, that single woman, what does she know about that? I'm human. I mean, I don't, I'm not, not stupid. I mean, okay, help me. I, maybe I shouldn't use that word. But anyway, I'm not dumb. But anyway, <laughs> uh-huh. But you know what? But when you have a relationship, no matter what happens, yes. no matter what, you're going to stay with that person. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. You know, because, it's a, because you're in a relationship, and that's covenant, and that's binding. And that's how we have to be in relationship with the Lord, whether things go our way or they don't go our way. If God does what we want him to do, if he doesn't do it, come on. We're, we're in a relationship with him. We're not going to be, we're not going to be, you know, hanging out with him for a little while. When it doesn't work, we'll just throw him overboard and pick us up another God. It doesn't work like that. Come on. Come on. Uh -huh. That's why we have people backsliding all the time. We have people running from church to church. And the reason why the, I'm going to preach like the prophet now. See, the reason why they run from church to church is because they're looking for another thrill. They're just looking for another experience. Uh -huh. they, they, uh, they don't want to marry you. They don't want covenant. They don't want relationship. They don't want commitment. They want to go down the street to the church and shack up with them for a while. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Does that make sense to anybody? And, and that's how we treat God a lot of times. We said, oh, yeah, no, but I'm not getting what I want from you, God, so I'll just pick me up another lover. That's just what I'll do. And we pick up other lovers, whether it's money or pleasure or, come on, or whatever it might be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But we need to stay in that relationship with the Lord and go after God with everything within us. The, the experience is never going to work. Work. Are you hearing me? It's never going to hold up. We're going to have to stop fighting and start clinging to him and start seeking him. And we know that Jacob went on to be blessed and God changed him. He gave him the name change. When we go after God, we don't need to go after possessions. We don't need to go after money. We don't need to go after houses and lands. We don't need to go after other pleasures. We just don't. Come on. These things are not. They're never going to last. Is that right? Uh huh. And when and, and we get into this thing about it's what I want. All we should really want is Him. Yeah. We want Him. Yeah. I'm going to be personal here. I'm going to be a little bit personal right here. And uh, and when I get personal, I always say, God, I always want You to be glorified when I share anything about myself. I have to humble myself and share anything about myself. I didn't get saved until I was 30. I got saved in 1973. And, uh, and, and the Lord saved me and filled me with the Holy Ghost on Easter weekend. And that's why it's always a very special time for me. I got saved on Good Friday, got baptized in the Holy Ghost on Easter Sunday morning. Uh-huh. And, and then... Um, and the Lord, uh, I was, got baptized in water in April the next month, joined the Church of God, became uh, the minister of music in my church, and, and even later took on a class. And, you know, and everything was just going really well. And I had my wonderful job also in, in human resources. And I was just doing great, you know. And, and I just uh, told the Lord, I said, God, now here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to bring Mr. Wonderful in my life. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I am preaching on going after God, okay? I'm not finished with that yet. Uh, I, just want you, uh, I, just want you, I just want you to hang in here with me. I said, I just want you to, now, now that I'm saved and Holy Ghost filled and I'm walking in, working in the church and walking with you, God, you know, all I want you to do is bring, you know, Mr. Wonderful into my life. And he said, I'm here. Uh huh, uh huh. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Wonderful. He said, I am Mr. Wonderful. I'm Wonderful Counselor. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mighty God. <laughs> Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Okay? Uh huh. See, I am Wonderful. But here, here I'm Mr. Wonderful in my life. I want you to bring me a husband, God. I want you to give me one son, and I want you to give me a Pomeranian. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, I want me a Pomeranian. You know, that's not a plant, you know. That's a dog, okay? Uh, is, uh, yeah, is anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah, uh-huh. I'm a husband, a son, and a Pomeranian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, I'm, uh, and so I'm praying and I'm fasting, you know, and I'm getting everybody praying and telling them to pray and fast with me, and God just wasn't answering that prayer, you know? I mean, he just wasn't answering that thing, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord. And then the Lord just started dealing with me about this preaching thing. And I'm like, no way. I know I'm not doing that. I know I'm not going to be doing any preaching. No, no way. Uh-uh. No, I'm not. Because God was very specific. And I'll tell anybody, if, if you're called to preach, you're going to know what you're called to do. Okay? He's going to make it plain. I just want you to know that. And if you don't know what he wants you to do, maybe he's not called you to do it. God, let me just get up in your business right there. Just let me just help you with that. Let me bless you with that. Okay? Because he'll be very specific with it. And when he was specific, he really was. He says, I want you to remain single for the rest of your life and never had been married anyway. All right? And I want you to remain single. You will not have biological children. Oh, Lord. Mm. I said, God, what do you have against me? <laughs> yeah, and live by faith. And uh, uh, yeah, Oh, yeah. I want you, and live by faith. And the other thing that I want you to do, I want you to win souls. I want you to be a blessing to my people. But I'm going to send you to the South. And I'm going to send you to all white churches. And you're going to break through racial and cultural <laughs> barriers. And, and you're going, oh, Lord. <laughs> I said, God, I know you got something against me now. I know you don't like me at all now. I, 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 sir, I know you have not thought that thing through. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I know you haven't. I just know you have not. I mean, you're calling on the wrong person for this, you know. I mean, uh, why would you lay all that on one little woman here in New Jersey? Why would you do that, you know? You know, ask me to give up all of those things and, the, and you know, and not have it my way. And I've always dreamed about that beautiful uh, uh, winter wedding and, and dreamed about this and dreamed about that. And now you've come and gotten into my business. <laughs> yeah, and he will do that. <laughs> And he has the right to do that. How many of you know that right now? But you see, I wasn't wanting that. I fought against that. I fought against the will of God. See, you thought I was so holy that I just automatically said, oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll do that. I'll do what you want me to do. No, I did not. I said, no, I'm not doing that. No, I am not going to do that. Well, now we're 40 years later and I'm doing just that. How many you want to know why? And I'm not telling you that I could do this in my own mind. I couldn't do it in my own emotions and feelings and mental state or anything else. But I want to tell you by the grace of God and through the power of the Holy Ghost, I was able to stand one day and said, okay, God. But I was going after this. I was going after that. I thought I needed a husband. I had to have the children. I had to have the job. I had to have. But once I started going after God. Come on. Oh, yeah. I had to renew my relationship, actually. It was, I mean, it wasn't that I wasn't saved or anything. But, see, I had gotten a real attitude about that. Why do I have to live like that? Why do I have to, you know, struggle like that or sacrifice? I thought, you know, why do I have to do that? You know, I had to. And so when I had to get to the place where I had to renew that relationship and said, okay, God, I've got to make it all about you. I've got to make it all about you. And then in the early 80s, here's where I go into my story. In the early 80s, God sent me to, uh, to Germany. I was only supposed to be there for six weeks, and I stayed for six months. And I went to preach for a young couple that had two little boys, and we were in this little teeny-weeny apartment, and 
And uh, the boys jumped all over the place, you know, uh, uh, when I was there. And, and, and uh, they would just do everything, you know, to get my attention and that kind of thing. And, you know, there I was preaching. And, and the Lord moved on me to be a blessing to the boys and, and to be a blessing to that family that was there struggling to do the work of the Lord at that time in the early 80s. And I just want to tell you something. I'm glad that I uh, said yes to God and I went after the will of God. I went after the purpose of God. God, because when we go after the will of God and go after the pur purpose of God, God will fulfill your life. He will give you what he asks you to, to give up. Come on. And that's why they're sitting in this house right now. He was the little boy that was five years old. Come on. You see, when we, uh huh, five years old, his, his little daughter, come on, little, two little daughters, are you hearing what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? I don't know what God has planned for Mallory, but I want to tell you, I'm glad that I said, okay, God, I give up what I want. I give up my dreams. I give up my plans. I give up my desires, and I desire what you want. I want what you want, and I have children. I have grandchildren. I have, come on. Their, their mother is my daughter, Jeannie. And come, are you hearing? Are you hearing what I'm saying? When we go after God, you don't know how He is going to return the blessing to you. How He's going to fill your life. And I am satisfied knowing I have children. I am satisfied knowing I have grandchildren. I am. Mallory has even gone up to other African American, or uh, she went up to a, an African American woman and even said, "You look like my great grandma." Uh huh. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah. Do you do you see what I'm saying? Do you see why? It, do you see why it's important? You don't know what this generation is going to continue to do. You don't know what that generation right there is going to do. I have a picture of her with the microphone at my house. I just looked at it the other day. I don't know if she'll preach one day. She she might not. God might not have that in a plan for her life. But you know what? I want her to be able to do that, to go after God in that way, if that's what God would have her to do. Come on, is anybody helping me right now? Is anybody going to help me to preach that right now? We don't know how God is going to bless us. And I just want to tell you that their mother is a tremendous blessing to me. And she has been for years and, 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 and helping me in so many different ways and, and all of them as a family. So God will make it up to you in one way or another. He knows how to even the score. If, we, if we'll just go after him, he'll say, if you'll just forget everything else, if you'll just come after me, I will show you what I'm able to do. How many of you believe that right now? Somebody's net said, I need to go after God. I'm not going to look for anything to the left or to the right. I'm not going to look for another pleasure. I, I can't find peace anywhere else because he's the only prince of peace. I cannot find deliverance anywhere else because he's the only deliverer. I cannot find love anywhere else because his love is an unfailing love. Come on. Come on, somebody. Help me right here. Uh huh. He's a way maker. Somebody help me. Uh, he's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Come on. That's who you are. Oh God. Somebody raise your hands and say, uh, if I go after God, I have the promise. Of Hallelujah. When I go after God, I have the promise he'll make a way out of no way. I go after God, he'll restore. I go after God, he will give back what the enemy has stolen. If I go after God, he'll touch and heal my body. If I go after God, he'll heal my children. Come on, he'll heal my unsaved loved ones. Somebody praise the Lord. If I'll go after God, he'll prosper me. If I go after God, if you need healing, if you need deliverance, I suggest you just go after God. You don't even need to go after the healing. You just go after him. He says, if you'll seek me first, come on. I'll do all the adding. Come on. I'll add the healing. I'll add the prosperity. I'll add the financial blessing. I'll add the peace. If you'll just thirst for me. My God, my God. My God, my God. If you'll just come after me. If you'll just come after me. If you'll just chase after me, if you'll just want me more than you want any, anyone else or anything else, that's when I'll fill your life. That's when I'll complete your life. That's when I'll come on somebody say, I want a relationship with God. I don't want to come after you just for what I can get from you. I want you to hear what Job said. My God, my God. 
I want you to hear what Job said. Jesus. Here's what he said. He said, I've heard about you, my Lord. This thing, this verse touches me. He says, I've heard about you. In Job 42, he says, I've heard about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've seen you. I've, I've heard about you. He says, but now I know you. Did anybody hear? Yes, <laughs> My Lord, my Lord, did you hear this? Did you hear those words? They're some powerful words. When did Job say that, Tommy? When did he say that? After God had stripped him of everything he had. It was after God had stripped him. He had riches and wealth of every kind, and you know it. Is that right? But God took every bit of it away from him. Is that right? And that's when he said, but now I know you. And that is the reason why, drummer, you were playing the bongo, weren't you? And that's the reason why. When, when, he, when he gave that testimony, now I know you, God says, and I'm going to give back to you what I took plus double. I'm going to give double. Because he finally got to the place where he knew God. Knew, know in scripture is an intimate term. Come on. It's an intimate term. He says, I know you now. I see we can see him. We can say, I believe in him. But the difference is knowing him. See, even with me, I know God. You see, because I got to know God through the, through the sacrifice, through the giving up. of the, I got to really know him. It's because it got to be, it, it, it changed. It, it, it wasn't about what I could have. It wasn't about what I could have. It was all about what I could be for God. And then he does the have when he'll do the have part, the giving part. And some of you, the needs that you have in your life right now, the things you're struggling with, the things that, uh, that you're holding on to or the things that are, are bothering you, the things that are holding you captive, the things that... Are you hearing me? If you'll just go, I'm telling you, I mean, all morning I was just, if you'll just go after God, if you'll just go after, relation, after the relationship, not the thing you want from him. Because let me ask you this. If he was to remove everything from you, and I know this is a hard question, but if he was to remove everything from you, Tonight, would you still want him? Houses, lands, cars, clothes, jewels, your position, your job, your military rank, whatever, whatever it is. Come on, I'm going to act like I know what I'm talking about. I know that some of you are looking at me like she, she's acting like she knows what she's doing. Uh-huh. If he pulled all that, come on. Would you still just want him? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to just think about that for a moment. If he just stripped everything. Would you be satisfied with just him? Knowing him. Think about it right now. Now, this is a, this is a tough place. I, I didn't know where I would end with this. But there's some things that we even have to, on our own, we have to ask God to help us and the help of the Holy Spirit to help us to get rid of some things so we can go after God because there are some things that are in our way, you know? You know, I have become, I have become Wonder Woman. 
I wonder where my keys are. I wonder where my glasses are. I wonder where my phone is. That's what happens when you get to be a senior like me. Yeah, I wonder where, you know, can find a thing. You know, and so, you know, I'm always looking for my keys. And here we are, you know, down in the car, in the floor of the car, and under the seat, pushing the seat back and forth, trying to find, you know, uh huh. You know, there was one time I was looking for my phone, I was talking on it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, I know nobody's done that in here but me. I'm older than anybody in this place. I know. Okay, I, I admit it. Come on. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I was looking for my phone. I'm talking on. I'm looking for my glasses. I've got them on. Come on. Are, are you hearing me? But one day when I was really frantically looking for my keys, and I'm making a point here, frantically looking for my keys, I had a lot of other things. I had all kinds of stuff in my hand, you know, and, I, and I'm trying to hold on to those things, and I'm trying to find my keys, and I'm digging in the couch, and I go out in the car, and I'm to see if my, if my keys were there. But let me just tell you something. When I finally put down all the things I had in my hand, my God, my God. <laughs> When I finally put down all the things I had in my hand, guess what? My keys were in my hand. And why did I share that? Why did I share that, brother? Because a lot of times that's what, there are things that we're holding on to that's keeping us from going after God. Is that right? There are too many things that we're holding on to. They're in the way. And, here, and, and if we would just get rid of those things, if we would put them down, if we would get rid of them out of our lives, we'll see that he's standing right there in front of us to meet that need that you have. Yes. Yes. Is that right? He's standing right there, just like my keys were right in my hand. And he's saying, and I'm right there. But you are holding on to so many other things. That's why it's so difficult for you to go after me. Does anybody believe that? I want you to stand to your feet right now. I want you to just stand up. Now, you see, now this is a more serious, this is a more serious time, this first night on this, because this is the most important thing is for us to get back to that. We've strayed into other areas, picked up other lovers. Come on, and when I say that, when I say picking up other lovers, I'm not talking about just a, 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 a human being. I'm talking, you know, anything that becomes more special to us and anything that takes the, uh, you know, takes our time away from God. And, you know, if, okay, could, do you want me to just change that word lover because maybe you're struggling with that? You know, uh, well, let, let's just say anything that you're spending more time with than God, it's an idol or anything that becomes more important to you than God and me than God, it becomes an idol. So are you more comfortable with me using the word idol? Jesus. <laughs> Come on. Come on. How about that? I want us to really think about it. You know, how much time we spend doing all the other things. All of us, we have to be, we have to work at this. This is something we have to really work on. And churches are just full of people that just want to be religious. They just want to be religious. But God has not called us to be religious. He's called us to be in relationship with him. Isn't that right? To be in love with him. <laughs> Uh -huh, to be in love with him. And he becomes the most important person. Serving him is the most important thing that we can do. And we might not be shouting this first night, not right now. We might not be shouting right now because this is, because this is an important time for us. This is an important place for each one of us. And I know that some of you have some very deep needs. Very, very deep needs. And I want to tell you, he's the need. He, he's, the, he's the only thing we need. He's, he's, he's what we need, who we need. And he'll take care of the other things. Come on. And, and you're, you're going around every day and you come to church, you don't have any peace. You're in church, but you don't have peace. And you want to know something? You have to go after God for that peace. 
nothing else will bring it. Do you believe that tonight? How many of you would say, I hear you, Jackie. And I know that I've gotten some things in your way. I know, I know I'm holding on to some things. Some of you are holding on to fear. You're holding on to doubt. You're holding, oh yeah, there's some unbelief. Some habits and hobbies. Some, I'm going to say that again. Some habits, some hobbies. And maybe even some addictions. And we talked about that in the beginning of the message. If we would just become addicted to Him, there would be no need for the other things. Is anybody really serious about that relationship go, really going after God? You know, even some... How many of you are in the ministry? How many of you are in the ministry? Uh-huh. How many of you are... Yeah. I just want to see a show of hands. You're in ministry. Yes. Well, one of the things I want to caution you about... I want to caution you. Please don't get busy doing things for God. And not going after God. Are you hearing me? I'll tell you, that's a serious matter for those who minister, for sure. Is that right, Pastor? Because we can find ourselves doing so much for God now that we cease to go after Him. Because that's a personal thing. Are you hearing me? That's personal. This is about, this is about your walk with the Lord. It's about your relationship with God. Your relationship is first. The ministry is second. Do you hear me? God wants all of the men in the altar. He wants all of the men in the altar. That's what he wants. For now. That's what he wants for now. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, gentlemen. And I want you to know that your big sister Jackie here respects every one of you. Every one of you. Uh huh. Every one of you. Oh God. Yeah, yeah. Young from the eldest to the youngest. That's it. That's it, women of God. Do you know how to intercede? Women of God, do you? Oh, God will get to you. Okay, come on. Do you know how to intercede? Do you know how to pray for somebody else? And not just make it about you or me. Do you know how to pray for somebody else? We see that group of people right there. The enemy will do everything possible to keep them from God. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Anything he can do to destroy this group of people standing in front of me. Do you know that? He hates this group of people standing in front of me. I want every one of you to look at me just right now, just for a moment. And then I want you to, and I want you to be praying too. Do you see my posture? Do you see my posture? I'm bowing my knees before you to honor you and respect you. And I mean this. I mean this. Do you see me? Do you see me, grandson? Grandma bows her knees in front of you. Because I respect and honor you. And you. And where's that young one over there? Let me come over here. Let me come over here. Let me come to these young ones. I'm a whole lot older than you. But I bow my knee. to respect you and honor you. Come on, women, you got to help me. you got to help Mama Jackie here. you got to help me pray. See, the enemy hates this group because, you see, God called them 
to be the head. God named them in their in their manhood. Come, come on, come on. I need you, ladies. I need you, ladies. Yeah, 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 yeah. God named you the head of your home and the, the priesthood, the priest of your home. He made you priest of your home. And they might be one day. But even though they're young, they're still, God put his sons in charge of the home and the family and Mayeto and in the church and in the in society. My God, my God, my God. And that's why I'm careful even to call you forward like that and to even say what I'm saying. But God wants you. He wants you to pack it up with your spiritual lives. He wants you to call on him and come to him and go after him. Come on, be a man of God. Be a father. Be a husband that's going after God with all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your heart. That you will go after God because you've got a family to guard. You've got a wife to guard. You've got children to guard and these young men that we teach them how to be men of God in their youth uh, so that they will never disrespect a female they will never disrespect and walk in uh, and walk in perversion and walk uh, come on uh, and have identity crises and if we can teach them to go after God right now, they would never have an identity crisis. They will always know that God created them to be men of God. Not to be gay, not to be homosexual, not to be drug addicts, not to be drug dealers, not to be, come on, perverts. Come on, yes, but to go after God and be men of God and God will give them success in everything that they do and there'll be blessing in your homes there'll be blessing in your marriages there'll be blessing upon your sons and blessings upon your daughters and you will guard your daughters and no pervert will ever dis disrespect your daughters say I'm going to go after God I'm going to be a father that goes after God I'm going to be a husband that goes after God I don't want my children just to hear their mother pray I need my children to hear me pray I don't want my children to just know my mother believes but know my father believes my father is walking as a man of God full of faith and full of the power of God Ooh, hallelujah be men full of faith come on be men full of faith be men full of faith come on we need Stevens we need men full of faith and full of the power and men that will say I'm going to go after God I'm going to chase after God I'm going to thirst for God I'm going to hold on to God I'm going to cling to God I'm going to hold on come on the enemy will not fool me the enemy will have no power in my mind no power in my body no power in my mental state no power in my emotions no power over my body yeah my god my god Lord, let the power of the Holy Ghost just come upon them, Lord. Lord, reveal yourself to them right now by your power. That they will say, God, I... <laughs> I'm going all the way with you. I'm going all the way with you tonight. I'm just going to go all the way with you tonight, God. I'm going to be a man that walks all the way with you. I'm going to be a man that walks with you and talks with you. Hallelujah. I'm going to be a man that has a relationship with you, oh God. The responsibility that you have standing guard over your family. Lord, in your name, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, there's some things going on here that's powerful right now. That's powerful right now. God, show yourself mighty right now. Show yourself mighty. Some of them, God, they've had some real struggles from their boyhood. My, 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 my. 
there's been some things from their boyhood my my god some things that have been unfair my lord my god but god you're able to restore and make it new you make my god yeah hey god you make all things new oh god you're able to make all things new you're able to restore and renew Restore and re my God, restore. That's the word. Restore. 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 You're the might. My God. My God. You're my, my God. You're the mighty restorer. Yes, you are. You're the mighty restorer. You're the Eliashib, the God who restores. Tonight by your power. Tonight by your power. Tonight by your hey, 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 not the thing I love is your God that forget forgives forgets your God forgives you forget you forgive you forget you renew you make things new now in the name of Jesus just open your mouth and just start praising and thanking God thank him because you know what he knows that you know what he knows more about you than you even know about yourself and yet he loves you more than anybody else can you see that's the thing that's so great about coming to him because he knows more than we even know. He knows more than I know about myself. And it's interesting because he loves me the deepest. And that's where it is with you. And you got to believe that. And there's nothing that you could ever do or say or any mistake you've ever made that would cause him to love any less. In your name, God. In your oh, In your name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's start. go ahead and thank him right now. Just go ahead and say, I thank you, God. I thank you that I'm being made new. I'm being made new right now. I'm that there's a newness that's flowing in my life right now, in my body, in my mind, even right now. My Lord, there's a newness. There's a so hey, 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 God, hey, God, hey, God, hey, God, hey, God, yes, God, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Raise them up. Raise them up. Raise them up. Raise them up, God. Raise them up in their youth. Raise them up in their youth. Empower them for this hour. There's another anointing. There's an uncommon anointing, Lord, that can come upon this generation now. Yeah, that's it. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Woo! Hey, 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 God. Come on. Say, God, I want you to use me in my youth. 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 Hallelujah. Use me in my youth. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Give him the wisdom. Give him the wisdom. Give him the wisdom. The wisdom. The wisdom. My God, my God, Holy Spirit just keeps praying for you and He just keeps interceding. He just keeps taking your need to directly to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We're so thankful, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, God. Do more, oh God. Even more, oh Lord. Yes, 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 in your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. In your name, God. Lord, take him in. Take him into that place with you, oh Lord. Into that wonderful place with you, God. A place where he's not been with you before. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Spirit of God, let the Holy Ghost move. Raise your hands and let the Spirit of God move. Raise your hands and praise Him. Raise your hands and bless the Lord. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Praise Him. 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 Come on, praise him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say it about Spirit of God, Spirit of God. We sing our song in the sanctuary. We sing our song to give you the glory. We sing our song to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Jesus, we lift up your praise. Emmanuel, we lift up your name. Hey, Heavenly Father, come in Messiah. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. And we will praise you in the same. Come on, come on, worship, come on. you for the rest of our days and we will praise you for the rest of our days come on jesus we lift you the praise manuel we lift up your name heavenly father somebody say yes come on right so we sing yes, yes, Lord. yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. Yes, come on. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. Yes, yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. Yes, yes, Lord, for the rest. Of Come on, yes. Yes, Lord, for the rest of our days. Yes. Come on, come on, 
Come and tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Hey, tell him yes. Yes. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Tell him it's all about you. Yes, Lord, for the rest of my days. Tell him yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah for the rest of our days. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah for the rest of our days. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah for the rest of our days. Come on, hallelujah. 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 Hey. about you all about you come on tell him it's all about you come on tell him women of God it's all about you all about you come on tell him one more time it's all about you you hallelujah come on tell him tell him church say it's no longer about me it's no longer what I want it's all about you come on hallelujah yeah hallelujah
Lentes Mount Yukon. Come on, we just raise our voices. Say, God, I want to renew my marriage relationship with you tonight. I want to renew my covenant relationship with you tonight. Come on, I want to get rid of all the other things that are hindering us. Come on, I want them removed from my life. I want them to be gone, be gone, be gone, be gone. It, I want to make it all about you, oh God. It's not about me. It's not about him. Come on. It's about you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody to compare with you, oh God. I'm sorry that I've made it about other things. I'm sorry. That I've made it about other people. I'm sorry that I've made it about myself. Forgive me, Lord. Come on, church. Forgive me, God. Come on. Come on. Let's have a time of repentance here. Forgive me. Come on. Forgive me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's all right for the church to have a time of repentance. Come on. To have a time of turning around and go in the other direction. There's nothing wrong with that. All about you. How many of you want How many of you want that tonight? How many of you really want that now? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, when people are married, they renew their wedding vows from time to time. And you know what? We need to renew that love relationship that we have with God through Jesus Christ the lover of our souls the love of our life the bridegroom and we are the bride of Christ how many of you believe that right now we we are the bride of Christ we are that bride and oh God You know how you want to please your husband and your wife. God, we want to please you tonight. By going after you and thirsting for you afresh and anew. God, for panting after you. I've got to have more of you. I desire you. The desire. I long for you tonight. Come on, let's get there. Let's get there right now, every one of us. Let's get there right now. Lord, I long for you. I need you. I want you. I hunger and thirst for you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Come come on. Come on. God wants to bring us to a place. He wants to bring us into. Come on. I'm not going to keep you here much longer, but he wants he wants us to all just come to a place of a, a spiritual intimacy with him. That's it. This is the air I breathe. Come on. This is our love relationship here now. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your every word. Come on, our love relationship. I'm desperate for you. And I I'm lost without you. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the Jesus. I breathe. Hallelujah. He's just 
wrapping his arms around you and drawing you close. This He's just drawing you near. He's just drawing you near. He's drawing you near. is drawing you close. This is my love. It's my love. It's my love. Hallelujah. It's my love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Drawing you close. Drawing you near. Drawing you near. Hallelujah. This is my daily bread. Thank you for loving me like that, God. Thank you for loving me just like I am. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave, you never forsake, you never withdraw your love. And I thank you. when we've ignored you in the midnight hour. Forgive us when everything else has become so much more important. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us. Forgive us if I've ignored you. Forgive us. Thank you, Lord. Have mercy, oh God. Have mercy. has arrested us here for a few moments. He's, he's just kind of arrested us in this place right now. To just really come clean with some things. Just to come clean. He's just arrested us for a moment. To just come clean with some things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is your moment. This is your moment. This, this is your moment. This is your this, This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. I feel it's between you, hallelujah, and your God. Hallelujah. This is your time. It's your moment. It's your moment with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel Jesus. Hallelujah. Just keep spreading the love. I feel Jesus. Just keep spreading the love. Just keep spreading the love within you. to make things right with the Lord. This is the atmosphere for that. This is the, this is the perfect atmosphere for just confessing, confessing, repenting, just saying, you know, I'm going to make it right with you tonight. I'm going to get this right before I leave this sanctuary tonight. I'm going to get it right with you, Lord. I'm asking you to forgive me. I apologize. I'm sorry. how I have treated you for I'm thinking I'll hold it down just a little bit because I'm thinking I'm actually thinking right now suppose everybody treated you like I do suppose everybody treated you just like I do what would it be like what would the church be like what witness would there be for him if everybody treated you Lord like I do I want you to just think about this what would it be hi Lord and this is a time when you can just slip your hand up and say, you know what? I just want you to pray with me because I really want to, to make it right before I leave from here with God. I want to make sure everything is under the blood. I want to make sure that I've, that I've renewed my relationship with the Lord before I leave. And if there's someone here that has never accepted Jesus, if there's someone here tonight, you see, I don't know all of you, and I would hope that all of you know him personally as your Savior and Lord, but if there's someone here tonight and you don't know him as your Savior and Lord, if you've not confessed your sins, if you've not believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. If you have not done that, this is a perfect time for that. Is there anyone here that would slip your hand up and say, I'm not saved? 
I'm not born again. I go to church, but I don't know him personally. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? You're great. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone? If you're saved tonight, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh -huh. Go ahead. Thank the Lord. If you're saved tonight, raise your hand right up now. Ra raise your hand and say, thank God. <laughs> Come on, look at the smile. There's a smile on your face. Say, thank God. I know I'm a born. I know I'm a born again believer. <laughs> I know I'm a born again believer. I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm striving for that perfection, but I'm saved and I'm a child of God. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Come on. I'm blood bought. I'm blood purchased. I'm a blood bought child of God. Praise the Lord. But there's some things that still need to change in my life. Isn't that right? Still some things that need to change. Yes. Praise God. Somebody just say, thank you, Jesus. Would you say, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> thank you for giving your life. Thank you for giving your life. Hallelujah. 